Welcome to uh, this podcast on the subject of right of first refusal. I have with me Piers Harrison, who is a barrister at Tanfield Chambers. Good afternoon, Piers. Hello, Nicholas. Piers, I own a flat in a block. There are 20 flats in total in the building. I've been living there for 10 years. A lot of my neighbours have sold on since then and indeed another number of the current owners sublet. Uh, We do have managing agents and they do provide a fairly decent service. Uh, We, it's fair to say, have little involvement with the freeholder who lives far away from us. Now, I've just uh, received through the post um, an offer notice from the freeholder's solicitors. Tell me, what what should I look out for? Well, most likely, this notice is a statutory notice and it will be served under Section 5 of the Landlord and Tenant Act 1987, which obliges uh, a landlord to offer uh, premises to tenants before it sells to a third party. That's known as the right of first refusal. And if you get an offer, it, it's most likely uh, because the, the landlord is compelled to offer it to you. So the things to look for in the notice um, are, well, obviously, it, uh, it will state a purchase price. It's a right of first refusal. So it's not an indication that you can bid what you think appropriate for the freehold. He has in mind to sell to a third party, and the offer notice tells you the price at which he proposes to sell to the third party. So the first thing to do is look at the notice, look at the purchase price, and, and start thinking, well, is that a reasonable purchase price? And if you're not sure about that, then you need to get advice as to whether that is a good purchase price because just because the landlord has served the notice, there's no guarantee that that's actually um, going to be a good deal. He might be selling it above market value and you wouldn't want to pay more. So that's the first thing to look at. And probably the second thing is to look at the um, if there are any unusual terms for the deal because the offer notice has to tell you the purchase price and also the principal terms upon which the interest is going to be sold. So You may live in a flat, but um, what's being sold? Is it just the the landlord's interest uh, in your flat? Uh, Or is it that there are commercial premises in your building and he's also selling them? So obviously that sort of feeds into whether it's a good price. You need to see exactly what it is being sold. So you need to read the the notice carefully. um, And if there's anything you don't understand in that, you need to get advice straight away. Should I indeed get in contact with the other flat owners? Yes, you need to, and you need to do this quite quickly. In order to accept the offer contained in the notice, you need a requisite majority tenants, and that means more than 50% uh, of tenants uh, in the block. Now, if it's a converted house and there's only four, uh, four flats, that might not be terribly difficult. If, on the other hand, you live in a block and there's 50 uh, tenants, then it's going to be difficult to get that requisite majority. If you're in London, that might be, be even more difficult because it's very common in London for these flats to be held by foreign owners um, and that presents its own difficulties with getting in touch with them. Um, obviously, the first thing to do would be to um, contact the people that you do know own the flats, perhaps knock on the door of other flats and find out whether they're only occupiers or whether uh, they're occupied by tenants. And if you can't get a a requisite majority through doing that, then you're going to have to uh, contact the land registry uh, and find out the ownership details of the flat so that you can contact those people um, and start talking to them about whether they're interested in accepting the notice. Are there indeed any deadlines to worry about? Well, Yes, uh, there are. Uh, the notice will say um, uh, that you have two months within which to uh, accept the notice. Uh, and in this context, two months is not really a long period because more than likely within that period you'll need to uh, find out the other tenants who are interested in participating. You'll probably want to contact um, a solicitor and you'll probably want to get advice uh, from a surveyor on the, on the purchase price. So you need to start moving straight away because that, that, that those two months will be up um, very quickly. Uh, and the notice will also say that you have a further two months within which to nominate someone uh, to purchase um, the interest which is being sold. 
Um, and usually um, that will either be two or three of the tenants who act on behalf of the others if there's only a few flats, um, or it will be a company if there's more than that. Well, thank, thanks very much, Piers. Uh, obviously, I'm going to have to get my skates on, bearing in mind all these deadlines. Should I get a solicitor and or valuer on board, and if so, at what stage? Yeah, well, well as I've just uh, mentioned, uh, Nicholas, it's probably a good idea to get um, a solicitor and a surveyor if there's any doubt as to uh, whether the price stated in the notice is reasonable. There's going to be quite a lot of work to be done um, by the solicitor. Um, if there's more than a handful of tenants, it's advisable to have a participation agreement. Now, that's an agreement that binds you all in. Now, it's all very well for, pe for people to say, oh yes, I I I'm interested in accepting the notice. But when it comes to actually um, providing the cash, you need more than a an oral assurance. Ideally, you want uh, everyone who's interested in participating to come together and contractually agree uh, that they will uh, participate uh, and they will contribute uh, towards uh, the purchase price. We probably also want the solicitor to um, deal with the serving the acceptance notice uh, on the landlord. Uh, and you'll probably want the solicitor to deal with setting up a company if, um, if that's necessary. Um, and you'll want him to do that before you nominate um, someone uh, to uh, take the uh, conveyance from the the freeholder. So unless you're extremely clued up and prepared to do that work yourself, it's probably more prudent to get a solicitor involved at an early stage. Thanks, Piers. I was speaking to a friend the other day and he told me that he's just had a service charge demand arrive on his doormat. Like myself, he uh, lives in a flat in a building and he looked over this service charge demand and he could see that the freeholder had indeed changed hands. But until he got this demand, he had no idea that the freehold was on the market, let alone that it had been sold. Now, my friend, can he find out how much uh, the freehold was sold for? Yes, there's, th th there's two ways that he can do that. Um, one way is to check at the land registry. Uh, when uh, interests change hands, um, the, once they're registered at the land registry, the land registry st uh, states the um, the price that was paid for them. Having said that, um, there's a delay between a, uh, a transaction going through and someone being registered, so it's possible that um, the incoming freeholder may not yet have been registered. The other way he can find information out is that he can serve an information notice uh, on the incoming uh, freeholder. Now that's a notice under Section 11A of the Landlord and Tenant Act, 1987, which requests uh, details of the uh, transaction by which that person became uh, the freeholder. Having said that, once you've served an information notice, it's always prudent to check at the land registry just to make sure that the answer you receive corresponds with what the land registry is being told, because it's not un it's not unheard of for. Uh, uh, an incoming freeholder not to tell the entire truth about the interest, that's, uh, the purchase price of the interest which he's acquired. Now, my friend, uh, does he have any comeback against the old uh, and the current, the new freeholder? Well, the rationale of the um, Landlord and Tenant Act 1987 is that it's a right of first refusal uh, for the tenants. And the idea is that the tenants get the opportunity uh, to acquire the interest. Now, what should happen is that the freeholder should serve an offer notice before he conveys the interest uh, to the purchaser. But if he hasn't done that, the Act provides a mechanism where the tenants can take that interest off the uh, purchaser um, on the same terms as he contracted with the, the outgoing freeholder. So. What you would want to do uh, is serve the information notice, which I just referred to, find out what the terms of the transaction were. And if the tenants think that, that is an attractive uh, mechanism or an attractive uh, price that was paid, uh, then they can serve another notice on the purchaser, uh, which will compel him to transfer uh, the interest in the same terms that he acquired it. Thank you. Now, my friend, should he indeed, uh, like 
my own situation, uh, get in contact with the other flat owners. Yes, uh, he'll need to get a requisite majority of uh, tenants, which means more than 50%, uh, and so he'll need to set, up, set to straight away uh, in contacting the other flat owners, uh, and if he can't um, contact them through uh, putting a letter through their door, uh, he'll have to look at the land registry and get an address from the, uh, from the land registry for the owner of each flat. Does my friend have any deadlines to worry about? The answer to that is yes and no. Um, if he goes down the route of serving an information notice, then that starts time uh, running against him, and he has six months from the answer uh, or the response to the, the information notice. Um, the other way that time might start running, I mean, on the way that you've described it, time wouldn't be running yet, because the other way that time starts running is where uh, the landlord serves on the tenant's uh, information which discloses not only that the transaction has taken place but also alerts them to their rights under the Act. So um, if he sometime after receiving this service charge demand got another notice saying hello I'm your new freeholder I bought the freehold on such and such days and by the way you've got rights under the Act um, then um, that would start time running uh, against him and Again, the time limit would be six months. Right, and um, finally, uh, my friend's situation, should he go out and get a solicitor or a valet or indeed both and get them on board? Uh, and if so, at what stage? Well, he'll need a valuer if, if there's any doubt as to whether um, the price paid uh, was uh, a reasonable price. And I, I would say in this situation, it's absolutely essential to get a solicitor because um, the mechanics of uh, compelling a purchaser to convey uh, to tenants is um, complex uh, and uh, it, it would be essential to have uh, a solicitor in place. Just before we uh, leave this subject, I'd also say that barring the landlord serving a notice saying, by the way, this transaction's happened and you have rights under the Act, there's no long stop uh, time limit, uh, and I've been involved in cases where 10 years after the original transaction, uh, the tenants have uh, found uh, out that uh, they've got a new freeholder who hasn't served the notice and that they've got rights under the Act and have been successful in getting the the, the interest transferred to them. Thank you. Um, I just wondered, um, can we end with, say, three important points for the listeners to take away with them? Yes, I would say the first point is that regardless of any recent transactions, if a tenant is thinking about enfranchising his block, he should look into the history of transactions with the freehold because there's nothing nicer than finding out that the freehold was transferred five years ago and you can acquire it today at the price that it was sold five years ago. So that's my first um, point. My second point is check what you are told by landlords. Uh, I had one case where uh, the tenant didn't serve an information notice because he didn't know what his rights were. So he asked the landlord in correspondence what the landlord had paid for his interest. The landlord said that he'd paid £25,000. Uh, when the tenant checked at the land registry, it turned out that the landlord had paid £500 uh, for his interest. And he subsequently uh, served a purchase notice on the landlord and was successful in buying the landlord's interest, not for the 25000 that the landlord had intimated he'd paid, but £500 uh, that had actually been uh, paid. And probably the third uh, takeaway point is um, get organised and get advice at an early stage. If you've been served with uh, an offer notice, two months is not a long time to get organised. Within that period, you're going to have to get the other tenants together and get advice and serve, serve a notice. So you really need to get moving. Thank you very much, Piers. Um, thanks very much for uh, the podcast. And thank you very much for listening.